Okay, today I'm going to be showing my evidence and proofs that gravity is nothing to do with bendy space-time or Einstein and that's all nonsense and that gravity is actually electromagnetism and electromagnetism is in every atom of the universe and so what you are seeing on screen is happening and produced by all matter in the universe by electromagnetism. Electromagnetism rolls and shapes matter. Now I'd have to show this to mimic gravity. Um, so I say electromagnetic uh, fields are pulling down water and I say they're pulling them down in the same manner as that magnet. And from my evidence I have reproduced the effect of falling water. This of course is mimicking the Cavendish experiment because energy attracts matter and so the two uh, balls of matter are pulled together by electromagnetism. It's got nothing to do with gravity because energy moves matter. So that's two recreated. How Earth's gravity affects water and how it affects the Cavendish experiment. Here now is uh, another bit of video that I made earlier. Hello and welcome to Scientifically Speaking. All right, here's how you debunk <sighs> bendy space-time by Einstein. Um, here's a video of how they tell you what uh, gravity works. Bend space-time more different directions. But there was a preferred direction. The disk it formed from had a slight preference one way versus another and things going the opposite way got eliminated and when it's all said and done everything's going the same way. Which is ridiculous. So there you go. The Earth sits on something and creates a bend in space and things spinning. That's uh, totally nonsense. Um, this is uh, how planets sit in space. So Einstein's theory of general relativity predicted that space-time around Earth would not only be warped but also twisted by the planet's rotation, which is silly. So the planet moves something that doesn't exist, which would be space. Space is the absence of things. Things are in space. And so the day they approved this, which was saying that space-time and bendy space exist, was last year. NASA approved it, so they believe it. So that goes with me telling you that they've only just said that electricity and electromagnetism are in space. And warped and twisted by the planet's rotation. Well, no, that would have to be the Coriolis effect, which is unproven words. Just by pouring something and saying, look, it rotates, is ridiculous. Ridiculous. To then say it's a Coriolis effect, which is based on the spin of the universe. Again, there's things spinning in different directions, so that's absolute rubbish. Whereas electromagnetism rotates matter, and it's proven on video. So, what does that mean? That means gravity is here. Excuse my rubbish pens, I haven't got any left. Which means gravity is doing this. And then it's also doing this and this and that. So everywhere it looks the gravity field looks like that which is funny because that's an EM field gravity doesn't do that gravity does that which then makes it look like an EM field. So what is it? It's an EM field. Thanks very much. My name is Lee. I follow the Christ. And Einstein stuff is the dumbest crap I've ever heard. Thanks a lot. Okay, so um, apparently a, uh, a thing that causes gravity according to Einstein is that it makes a bend in space and so this makes things um, fall into the planet so to speak. It also makes things rise and fall due to the gravity of the planet. So if I can mimic um, something spinning in that would suggest a bend in space and if I can show it going in a elliptical or circular path but actually wavering in and out by varying depths I also will have shown that it 
acts like gravity. Let's see if I can do that. So I have to show something spinning in as if there was a funnel or a bend, something pulling it into the planet. And so, the law of relativity that says an object will make a bend in space due to the mass and weight and everything else that is supposed Einstein gravity will bend space and pull it in. And yet, there on screen is something being pulled in without any bend in space at all. So, mimicking gravity. These are the tests. This is with a small steel ball. Will it do the same? Okay, so what do we have so far? So far, I have shown um, ferrofluid mimicking rain as it is pulled into a magnet and shown evidence that water falls in spheres, not in silly droplet looking things that children draw, but they fall in round droplets. Um, so I have mimicked and shown electromagnetism forming spheres by its electromagnetic wave and vortex rotations. On the bottom left there I've shown that the Cavendish experiment is recreated using electromagnetism and there are balls of matter being pulled together. It's got nothing to do with gravity because it's in an energy field right now and so it is energy that attracts matter, matter covers energy and energy moves matter. So, so far I've satisfied well, I've satisfied the Cavendish experiment. I'm going to satisfy probe B and the Galileo satellites in a moment. Um, but I just wanted to throw in my ace, that is that electromagnetism forms spheres in all things. So I've just shown what nature is doing and how I've already explained how it's doing it in hundreds of other videos. So the ace in the deck here that I hold is that I've shown how spheres are created and they're not created by balls of matter pulsating out a ball of matter. I already said that was impossible and ridiculous. I said it was like blowing a bubble and on screen that is how they are made. Energy is going one way, matter is going the other. Well actually energy is going at least two directions, it may well be going at least four. Um, but I'll get to that in my next video showing how a sphere is formed. But right now, I show how a sphere is formed, which shouldn't be possible. I'm the only man who's ever done it in the whole of history and explained how it's done. I show the Cavendish experiment. Now it's time to show uh, that the probe B and the Galileo satellites, um, I'm going to mimic their behaviour too. So uh, here we go. And I have also shown uh, the bendiness of electromagnetism that pulls things in in a funnel as if space were bent. Okay, and here we go. This is what the Galileo satellites, how they're proving gravity. However, their orbits remain elliptical with each satellite climbing and falling some 8,500 kilometers twice per day. It is these regular shifts in height and therefore gravity levels, which made the satellites so valuable to the research teams. So it's the regular shift in height and therefore gravity levels 
which is what is making the satellite go up and down by 8,500 kilometers a day. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna show matter doing that with a uh, magnet and a steel ball. It's gonna take a wavy line around the magnet as if it's rising and falling because that is what it's doing. Now, some of these loops get bigger and smaller depending on which field it's actually in. So I can't get a full circle because of the energy I have to put into it, but you will see it wavering in and out, which is, uh, according to NASA, um, these regular shifts in height and therefore gravity levels made the satellite so valuable in research terms. Well, as you can see on screen, my little ball bearing, which is made of metal, which is what the satellites are made of, um, is wobbling in and out, depending on how fast I move it. The satellites are moving so that they climb and fall twice a day. Mine are different because it's powered by my finger. But on one of the loops, the big outside, this one, we only got four then. So if it was traveling a little faster, there would only be two loops. But as you can see, it wobbles in and out and so I have satisfied the claim that regular shifts in height are therefore gravity levels using electromagnetism. So today, in a game of three card brag, I've sat here with four cards. So I've shown the Cavendish experiment recreated using electromagnetism. I've shown Bendy Space recreated using electromagnetism. And I've showed gravity as it's claimed it is uh, regular shifts in height and therefore gravity levels, I am showing that right now. So we both got three cards each, but I'm gonna throw in my ace, which of course is the fact that I have shown how spheres are made by electromagnetism. So I've recreated gravity and I've told you what gravity is and shown it to be a perfect mimic of pulling liquid to a surface because Rain doesn't fall in teardrop shapes that they show on cartoons and all the rest of it. They fall as spheres because we live in an electromagnetic field and it is rotating because energy and matter are within the system. And so it rotates matter downwards. And a wave is trying to push us all upwards. Otherwise we'd be flat on the ground. But that's a different video that I've already done. So there we go. Relativity has been killed today by me showing more than Einstein's relativity, gravity, bendy space-time. I've shown that space-time doesn't exist. I've explained, same as Tesla, that space-time isn't anything. Space is nothing. Space is the absence of everything. Space is created by the inflation of an electromagnetic field. So gravity has nothing on me. I've shown and proven and offered evidence that beats gravity, because I show how a sphere is made by electromagnetism. So remember, every single particle of matter in the universe gives off an EM field, which means it's creating spheres for its protons and its neutrons and its electrons in exactly the way I've shown. Inwards, or if it has excess energy, the flow will be reversed. Simple engineering. Thanks very much. My name is Lee, I follow the Christ, and I just blew Einstein's rubbish out of the water because what God teaches is excellence and wisdom and truth. All of this was given to me in visions in 2014 for three weeks, day and night, didn't sleep for nine days. And I've spent all this time presenting it to you. And now I've just destroyed relativity. And silly Simon Dan said I'd be a famous man overnight. That's because he's a bit of a pudding and he doesn't know anything about science God or how the world works. Either way, I've just defeated all science ever as a fundamental property of the universe and what is running in it. Thanks very much. My name is Lee. I will see you next time.